Hello to all the meeps and bubbles and welcome back. We are finally on our way to more colonization. And the only thing we need for that is just a new rocket interior. A short disclaimer, this episode consists of two parts. The first one being building the rocket interior and colonizing planetoids. The next part containing an exploit that I haven't shown yet and more colonization and shenanigans. Oh yeah, and we could also use some new dupes and a training room. So let's see what we have here. Rocketry interested Ashkan. Handy, loud sleeper, nyctophobic. Those dupes don't sound very good, but just a loud sleeper is no problem and requires light to sleep is also no problem. So maybe we take in our Ashkan. But first let's give him a proper name. So Nazgul, welcome to the base and thank you for being a patron. And right off to work. <laughs> Nazgul for now, I will just reactivate this room here to the left as a temporary assignment for you. Also, what's going on with Halo? Oh yeah, very hungry and radiated. But it's not feeding time yet. We can help him out a little bit. Reset the timer, open the door for the toilet. <laughs> and time to eat stuff. But one duplicate alone is not enough. So let's take in a second one. So let's see who this is. There we go. Let us defrost a friend. Also, inspect this building. Ted coming to the rescue and defrosting our lovely frozen game. Our lovely Nazgul? Wait, what? How? <laughs> Wait, what? How? Seriously, I didn't name it. Okay, so we got two Nazgul? What is going on? And why is he stressed already? So we got a Nazgul here and we... What? Ah, okay. Because we printed a duplicate that is based on the original data of a real person that has been thought. There are now two. So the other one obviously is the clone because it came from the cloning machine. But still, I have never seen that something like that in the game. I'm gonna rename you Nazgul the clone or the dupe. There we go. So you got the honor of having two duplicates. Uh, nice. Interestingly, both of the Nazguls are somewhat close. We got a piloting 6 original Nazgul with medicine 9 and we have a piloting 10 clone Nazgul with construction 3. And uh, this one has 3 skill points like all the defrosted friends. This is so interesting. We of course also prepared a bedroom for the original Nazgul. Nice, so we made Nazgul a bed now, but what is this critter dropper for? Well, easy explanation, I found some nice long hair slicksters. Now we can set this to auto angle surplus, set this to zero critter, all the critter, nine, and wait for a second. Even though it is nighttime already, wait came by, wrangled our critter, and now somebody has to pick it up, transport it over to the bedroom. For those of you who don't know it, the long hair slixer gives off a plus 50 decor bonus. Because it's just so super cute. And because I want both of the Nazgul's to pilot the new rocket, they both will get a training room. Nice, the room is done. Now we set this to Nazgul the dupe only. And the rest is not allowed to go in, only go out. Kyle, Ky why? Why do you like running so much? Just go out. Thank you, Kyle. That is better. And as for a training room, our lovely Nazgul is the only dupe that is able to get into this room. This one does not power the ceiling light, but it will fill up our batteries. I of course also restricted the access for the other dupes. Meanwhile, dumb as I am, I thought I'd give the dupes a better light source for the beach chairs, without considering cooling the lamps. And the only thing we need for that is just a new rocket interior. So why not start with that? First let's get rid of the rocket control station. Okay, let's start designing the rocket. You can see there's a lot of materials because I already tried a few times. <laughs> Didn't work out as intended. So let's start with a little bit of morale in form of a shower for the duplicates. Followed up by a atmosuit station, checkpoint and two dogs. After that I'm going to speed up the process a little bit and include a carbon dioxide filtration system, a toilet and a hand sanitizer. The bleach zone for the hand sanitizer came from the second planetoid. By the way this will not count as a bathroom because we have an industrial building in there. But that doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things because we are aiming towards a great hall which gives us plus six morale instead of the measly plus one for the latrine. The bedroom you saw me try to fit in the background will give us plus one morale as well. For that you will just 
need to achieve a size of 12 tiles. You can see that I tried to fit in two refrigerators accessible through this auto sweeper. With that I tried to make a long time storage on the left that I'm going to fill with chlorine. For the great hall itself we need at least 32 tiles and a decor of plus 20. For that I'm going to use an arrow pot which only has a decor bonus of plus 10. But since I'm going to make it out of diamond it will get a 100% bonus to that reaching the plus 20 decor bonus we require. We also need a power outlet for power from the outside and cables. What is left to do is make space for the refrigerator again and fill it with a sterile atmosphere. And because the whole atmosphere here is chlorine, because I screwed up with the bleach stone, use that to your benefit. Meaning we can just use the chlorine for the food storage room. For the liquid and gas piping I was going with a minimal approach, but change that up later. Later seems to be already there and I decided to put in way more pipes because they can store the liquid for the toilets. I wanted to have the same for the gas pipes because the more pipes we have, the more oxygen we can store in them. And they also help distribute the heat or the cold inside of the rocket. The oxygen for the rocket, for now will come from this pipe. I quickly checked out the room and found out that we are missing the recreation building for this to be a great hall, not just a mess hall. So I deleted the fridge, moved it to the left and placed the arrow pots one tile higher, leaving us no place for plants, but it also works without them, meaning we now do have the barrack and the great hall, coming together to a plus 7 morale boost, plus the shower bonus and a schedule. Now we just have to add the stuff that is missing, which in our case is clean water for the rocket. And we can get that by siphoning it off from the petroleum generators and cleaning it with this water sieve. The rest of this is just piping and waiting for the dupes to build it. Also because it had been ages ago since we had the last piece of sand on this planet, we do have to crush some material manually to produce sand. For our astronaut dupes to be fed very well, I thought about supercooling a batch of food so they have something to take with them, because we don't have a large amount of pickled long lasting food sources. Or even better, the everlasting berry sludge. So I tried increasing the cold in this room, cooling it down to at least minus 50 degrees and then quickly transport it to the rocket. But trust me when I say this is neither effective nor did it work very well. The only thing we achieved is freezing our carbon dioxide in the infinite food storage. I will add the material that we need on other planetoids in form of temp shift plates and debris. Maybe this will help cool down the rocket interior. Ages later, let's see, it helped a little. Now let's place a temp shift plate made out of ice. This is the last ice on this planetoid by the way. And after mopping this up we have a little bit of bottled water as well. And then we can fill in the rest of the temp shift plates, giving us a head start on the new planetoids. We also shouldn't neglect the cooling for the sand production, because as you see, the dupes are getting incapacitated because of the heat from this area, which stems from us crushing really really hot igneous rock, meaning we get good use out of our hospital again. <laughs> or just a triage cot for the less fortunate peasants. Yeah, slight issue, room's still too hot, need to cool it down. So I thought about just using 4 Wii's wars for that. I also found out that we do not have oxygen storage to supply the rocket interior. That's why I changed out the gas valve to a high pressure valve, overpressuring the room to 20 kilograms per tile of clean oxygen. I also added a storage unit that I'm filling up with helpful material. Then I deactivate the storage, drop it down and fill it with the next material. Enough polluted water went through our sieve filling up our rocket with clean water. I almost forgot, I will need a little bit of petroleum on the new planetoid. So I'm going to deconstruct the shower, place down a bottle emptier, drop it on the floor, mop it up and just carry it with me. I'm gonna use the very hot petroleum from here, mop it up, but then drop it here first. So it has time to cool down with the cooling loop of the steam turbines. Meanwhile on Stekou's planetoid, the enclosed telescope was no longer needed, because we researched every important tile around the planet which is why we can use the space for interplanetary launcher, as well as the corresponding radiation source and storage. This time I'm wasting my energy on space radiation, aiming it towards a wall-mounted red bolt reflector, storing it in a red bolt storage, which then fills up the launcher. This brings us to Wade's planet, where I just added a targeting beacon. And further down in the base, a payload opener. Why all of that? Because the reed fiber is running low on Wade's planet. Our reserves, which we build up from our Draco farms, have been used up. To speed up the loading process, I'm adding a few more of those generators. We also don't want those Paku to go to waste. Meanwhile our payload is arriving on the second planetoid, leaving our machinery the task to open it. And in all that time that has passed since we dropped the petroleum, it has had enough time to cool down, meaning we can now mop it up and drop it inside of the rocket. This will allow us to get the petroleum to its destination on other planetoids. Skill scrubbing the designated pilot won't hurt either, so their moral requirements are lower. 
but apparently a skill scrubbed Kyle for some reason. Nazgul the dupe already has no skills, which is why he is perfect to be our pilot. For the food I have the duplicants deliver barbecue and pickled meal ice. This is where I noticed that the Orlshuber couldn't reach the second fridge. That has to be an absolute fail on my side. But because I'm also good at fixing stuff, I managed to squeeze in the solution. I used a little bit of toilet water to block the chlorine from escaping, tiled in the rest, placed the refrigerator one tile higher, closed off the room again, deleted the corner tile and located the auto sweeper in a place where it can actually reach both fridges, which meant that we had to place the pilot seat above it, still leaving the room big enough to count as a great hall. Now back to the food that we want our astronauts to have. The choice for this isn't as easy as you might think. Grub fruit preserve for example would be a good choice because it theoretically can stay fresh for 32 cycles. Roast grub fruit nuts on the other hand only last for 8 cycles. The issue here being that we don't have much grub fruit preserve, but we do have a lot of roast grub fruit nuts, so maybe we compromise on pickled meal, which is a grizzly food source and has a moral debuff, but can also stay fresh for 32 cycles. So now that this rocket is finished and highly overpressured in a temperature range of 45 degrees, filled with water and filled with oxygen, now we can send off our lovely pilot patron wherever they are. A whole cycle later and Nazgul the dupe showed up. After receiving the pilot head, Nazgul can be assigned to the rocket, given a bedroom, a mess table and then they also need light to sleep. Because of the nyctophobic trait. Let's set the rocket to crew only, change the crew to Nazgul and change the destination for now to Wade's planet because we want to pick up another dupe. But until then, Nazgul, it is time for your trip. So you can take our excessive transit tube exosystem to reach even the last nook and cranny. In our case, this tiny rocket here. Begin the launch sequence. There we go, nice. How's the heat there? <laughs> this is going to melt. No, still fine. Here's our rocket. And it will take 1.8 cycles to reach Wade's planet. Oh wait, we don't want to fly to the planet, we want to fly to the orbit. Change the destination. And here's our lovely Nazgul, sleeping loudly. And he sleeps well, even though he needs light to sleep, because it touches this single tile here. There they are, suiting up to shower and then piloting that thing. Oh yeah, I totally forgot to give Nazgul the dupe a little bit of food. So let's set this to just one kilogram, set this to nine, set this to eight, and now this should fill. There you go Nazgul, there you go. Nazgul arrived in the orbit of Wade's planet, meaning that we can now clear the landing platform to make space for our bigger petroleum rocket. Nice. And why did we do all of that? Because we want the second Nazgul in here. We could also just have killed the original Nazgul and rebuild him on the other side. But this time I wanted to keep the original. So we now have Nazgul the original. Nazgul will get this bed here and maybe this mess table. Now we just have to set him as a crew. Nazgul the dupe and Nazgul and set a destination. Maybe we even refuel that thing. The oxygen can be solved easily and for the oxidizer I'm just going to send over a little bit of fertilizer from the first planet. And for the petroleum of the rocket I'm just going to siphon it off down here from our petroleum generators. Also let's quickly build a second rocket platform to get our halo back. There we are again and land. Very nice. You are free now, Halo. Go and get some food and oxygen. And uh, I forgot the letters. Minor, minor details. What the heck? Okay. Oh nice, finally, now that the rocket is refueled, we can send off our duplicants again. There's Nazgul the dupe, the other one is still missing change the destination to either Verdolin that has crashed satellites, a lush core, a peak light lux of 30,000, a lot of water geysers and natural gas. There's also a jungle, a forest and rust biome. Radioactive, ocean, forest and some water stuff. Maybe we go to Verdolin first. This is this one. After resupplying and refueling the rocket, both of our duplicants can board it. After that we can start and see the upper parts of the base burn down to the ground. Let's see how this goes. We just have 130 degrees Celsius. Let's hope the cooling can keep up with that. And here we do have the rocket flying towards Verdolin. And there we are. 
arrived at our new planet. Now in order for our duplicants to land we have to send down the trailblazer modules. I wasn't sure which dupe to decide on to send down but why not just send them both. Meaning in our case Nazgul and Nazgul the dupe will be sent down via the trailblazer modules. There's a little bit of a visual glitch you can't see both the landing spots. But for now it still worked out for the first duplicant. Oh come on! No! Well okay then, let's try this again. Please don't crash on me. First we deploy the regular Nazgul. Then we go to the planet. We wait. Nice. There's our Nazgul. Let's get back to the rocket and land the second Trailblazer module right next to our first Nazgul. I gave the original Nazgul the order to deconstruct their lander while we wait for the second to the left. There it is. Sometimes the landing spot will not show for a few seconds. But as soon as the second Nazgul has dropped, we can also order him to deconstruct the Trailblazer module and then use the material for the rocket platform. In our case, that is 800 kg of steel. We also need material for the ladders, hence the digging order to the left. But because the dupes are missing the hard digging skill, I'm going to add that. Wait, wait. Why is this little shit not wearing... Okay, other objective. Get this little annoyance down here to the oxygen. That sounds like we have to give this duplicate hard digging as well. Why? The rocket platform has been built and there seems to be enough space above. Land the rocket here and build a few ladders out of granite. Wait, wait, what? No, now he's wearing his suit again. But still, without oxygen, so that's not better. Leaving that aside, a few ladders should do the trick if we move the module all the way down. Man, that's cool. Seriously. Another typical rocket issue, at least for me, is that the dupes can't get into the rocket. Even though you set them as pilots and set it to crew only, even regardless if you allowed every duplicant in it by setting the rocket to all. I even tested if the duplicants can stand right in front of the door. Most of the time this issue can be fixed by moving the rocket parts. You're kidding me, right? Clay, you need to fix your rockets. This is not intuitive at all. Okay, I calmed down a little bit, so we can start on the refuel station. With that I mean an array of buildings that is able to refill every or most parts from our rocket. Starting with a pump for this polluted water and of course power from solar panels. The polluted water can then be cleaned and used in the shower and toilet systems. For the cleaning process we will need a rock crusher to produce sand for the water sieve, batteries to store the energy for the night, an electrolyzer and air filtration system in order for us to produce oxygen for the spacefarer motor and the suits. By the way, the material for all of that came from the temp shift plates in the background of our rocket interior. For now we started the water filtration but the pipes haven't been finished yet. So after that has been done, let's see how this works. Now the water is refueling our toilets in our water reservoir in form of this snake piping. This is finished as far as the dupes can build this because they don't have the skill for that. So let's check this out. I want to fill this room with a clean nice oxygen. That's why I placed the deodorizer right here. So as soon as I open this door I hope only clean oxygen will get in there. And we can set this valve to 0.1. So I just need a dupe in there. Get in there dupe. Check the oxygen. Nope no oxygen. Meaning it was a good idea to wait with the bridges. For now, let's cut them from the power. Oxygen, oxygen. Oh, I was lucky. <laughs> I got really lucky. Now I can connect this pipe. And now we should be producing hydrogen and oxygen. This time I set this filter to only accept oxygen. Meaning the hydrogen will get thrown out and the oxygen will be used here. Now we only need something to stop this system. Maybe something like this. I'm not going to explain this one because there are flaws in it and I will fix it soon. So this has been built. Now we can set these two to breathable gas, oxygen, copy the settings over to the next one. As soon as both of these are oxygen for longer than 20 seconds, then this will deactivate for a while. So now is the question, how can we get the petroleum? Well, now it is bug and exploit time. Let's go to the right side and think of something. First off, we need a little bit of space. While we do that, let me add another building to the left side, the skill scrubber. By the way, the dupes are pretty stressed. And we are running out of food. Let's collect the hexaland plant. And there are some more here. We just have to go through the radiated area. <laughs> oh man, poor dupes. 
The second and more reliable short term solution for our food problem is building a beacon. The beacon will allow the food packages sent from the main planetoid to land near it. To save the dupe's time and me the time to manually click each payload, a payload opener should do the trick. Let's send over... what do we have? Grub fruit, pickled meal. Pickled meal is a good choice. Let's allow the manual use and since the dupes only have access to 10 kg at a time, they will be sending over 6 kg. That is fine. And then I can set this to 3 again. There it is, pickled meal transported. So now as soon as this is full, we can send it to Verdolin. Clear this, change this. Bam, fired, nice. And now this should arrive in around 0.4 cycles, seriously, so quick. There they are, just arrived. Opening it, forgot to add an output so I don't have to do it manually. And then having the freaking binge eater eat it all. Man. Oh yeah, and let's not forget about the mini pot again. Nice. Food. Perfect. There you go. I still couldn't get to the exploit because the dupes were so stressed that they were eating all the food. Needing me to send over more food, creating an infinite loop of stress dupes. Which is why I had to focus on stress relief and better bedrooms for now. The game being generous also helps. I had a small mistake here because I was producing tiny little gas pockets again. So I added an atmo sensor set to above 1 kilogram here. I also fixed the automation. The NOT gate was on the wrong side of our filter gate. Adding to our mess, I included some atmo suit docks, sadly with the atmo suit checkpoint on the wrong side, a tiny recreation room and a night lamp for Nazgul the dupe. Okay, now that we have this here going and the base hopefully is stable enough to handle anything that we throw at it, let's keep on going with the real exploit here. Hello to all the memes and bubbles. Yeah, look at my screen glitching. <laughs>